The last time we reported on Japan, we told you about a new secrecy law designed to keep a lid on whistleblowers and discourage reporters from pursuing government secrets. Well, since then, in December, Prime Minister Shinzo Abe and his Liberal Democratic Party, the LDP, won convincingly in a snap election. So why would he need to worry about coverage in the mainstream news media now? Well, the Prime Minister's economic policies, known as Abenomics, cannot be called a runaway success, and his plans to restart the country's nuclear industry remain overshadowed by the Fukushima disaster. Then there's Abe's determination to play a role in the fight against ISIL, which amounts to a departure from Japan's pacifist constitution. Many in the Japanese news media are compliant and deferential, with a system of press self-regulation as institutionalized as the Kisha clubs or press clubs mediating between journalists and the government. It's not easy to get ahead as a reporter if you rock the boat. So when a critic of Abe's policies on the Middle East went live on the air and declared that I am not Abe, that proved to be a bad career move. The Listening Post's Will Young now on journalism in Japan and Shinzo Abe's medianomics. In January, Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe pledged $200 million in non-military aid to the countries fighting ISIL in the Middle East. Within 48 hours, ISIL demanded an identical sum for the release of two Japanese hostages. One of them, Kenji Goto, was a journalist. Ever since World War II, Japan's policy of pacifism has been constitutionally enshrined. One of the few media voices to argue Abe's Middle East policy might be unconstitutional was Shigeaki Koga, a commentator on a program called Hordo Station, which airs on one of the country's biggest channels, Asahi TV. On January 23rd, I said, I am not Abe. It wasn't just a question of the hostage crisis. I was concerned that the wrong image was being spread about us Japanese, the notion that we wanted to take part in the fight. This isn't how the Japanese people think. They are of a different point of view to Abe. I knew that I was going to be fired. I wanted to say this was not a normal reshuffle, so I explained this live on air to highlight how much pressure the government has exerted onto the media. The media, who have been paralyzed by Abe's administration, said that those who appeared on TV should not be provoking the situation any further. So there are reports that Chief Cabinet Secretary Suga said, if it was up to me, I would declare that Koga's comments were in violation of the broadcasting law. That sent a warning shot across the bows of TV Asahi, meaning the displeasure of Prime Minister Abe, meaning that TV Asahi might face a lot of pressure. At the end of the day, he and the anchor uh, celebrity presenter had a very much open row in the public on the show. So I frankly don't know it had to do with any sort of perceived pressure. I think Mr. Koga's allegations have gathered uh, a certain number of followers, but successfully alienated himself from otherwise very much friendly supporters of his. Alienated or excommunicated. What the cabinet secretary said concerning Koga's outburst left little room for interpretation. We will closely watch how the TV station handles the issue in line with the broadcast law, Suga told reporters. A day later, Asahi TV's chairman apologized to viewers for what he called an unscheduled happening. The chairman denied any government pressure, but ministries have on several occasions sent letters to the producers of Hordor Station. And in November last year, a letter was sent to all major networks in advance of December's elections. The language was low-key, but in the Japanese context, the message was clear. 
The latter is of course very polite, with phrases such as I'm consistently grateful for your help, but it also uses words such as fairly, neutrally and composed and advises on how to choose commentators and conduct interviews. For the government to write to broadcasters, especially before elections, exerting pressure is rather frightening, especially as they hold the ministerial authority to grant permits and approvals. Although every broadcaster and media outlet received these guidelines, there was no reporting on the issue until I said something about it. For journalists from other countries, this would not even have been considered a serious level of pressure but simply an objection from the government. The Japanese media panic on a daily basis and then feel the need to apologize. Consider one measure of a healthy media. Country rankings by Paris-based NGO Reporters Without Borders, based on those countries' records on press freedom. Japan improved dramatically after 2006, rising to 11th place in 2010. Shinzo Abe led the LDP back to power in 2012, and Japan has dropped 50 places in the index to 61st. Some point to a series of national upheavals, among them the nuclear disaster at Fukushima. Others to a state secrecy law that criminalizes whistleblowing and the journalism that would bring government leaks to light. It's a stunning nosedive. You know, it's a um, um, dramatic failure from the 11th to the 61st. After the Fukushima 3 nuclear reactor meltdown, the press here seemed to be overly deferential and the government under Abe has passed state secrecy legislation. This criminalizes whistleblowing, so any journalist caught trying to solicit secrets is subject to long-term imprisonment. Even without such a threat, Japanese journalists have, in the main, been reluctant to embarrass their political leaders. Self-censorship is a problem in many countries, but in Japan, it goes one step further, into the realm of collective self-censorship. Whether it's the Tokyo Police, Toyota Motor Company, or a government ministry, access to information requires high-level sources, and only journalists who are members of Kisha Club, or press clubs, get a foot in the door. To attend press conferences at the finance ministry, you must be a member of the finance ministry's Kisha Club. It is absolutely essential that you are a member of the Kisha Club in order to gain any information. So no one dares step outside the circle. Rather, they are in consultation and thus the articles all end up being the same. It's not the government that controls who's a member. The media are in control. Their target is consistency. This is the typical Japanese mentality, that it's safer to be in the same boat as others around you. The correspondents who stay quiet and go with the flow are most likely to reach the top, those who manage good relationships. As Shinzo Abe's approval ratings hang in the balance, Lingering doubts about Abenomics and Japan's international involvement, as well as unease about a nuclear restart, make the presentation of policies of critical importance. Secrecy in government, a close relationship between power and the press, and self-regulation in the media will be instrumental to Shinzo Abe's plans. As we just saw, there are some voices in Japan chipping away at the dominance of the corporate and state-run mainstream news media. Takashi Uesugi, who we interviewed for that piece, is a longtime critic of the Kisha Club system. He runs the Japanese-language online magazine No Border, which broke the story about government letters to broadcasters ahead of last year's elections. One of No Border's latest investigations has been into the astronomical expenses being claimed by some members of the Japanese parliament. Corporate corruption is the focus of FACTA, which is the print and online magazine that broke the news of large-scale fraud at the Japanese technology giant Olympus. That was a story that Nikkei, Japan's leading financial and business news outlet, initially refused to touch. And it's no coincidence that FACTA's founder, Shigeo Abe, is a former Nikkei journalist who left that outfit when editors spiked another story about corporate fraud 
back in the 1990s. One resource in English is the Shingetsu News Agency, which is run by an American academic, Michael Penn. It carries original articles on culture, society, and politics, especially on controversial issues that the Japanese media are often unwilling to communicate to foreign audiences, such as LGBT rights, opposition to the U.S. military base in Okinawa, and self-censorship in the news media. Check out our Facebook page for more details on all these sites.